Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Weather Center Nazario. Today is Tuesday, November 21st, 2023. We are officially three days away from the Thanksgiving holiday, and I'm very excited to celebrate with each and every one of you out there. Today, we're going to go ahead and kind of give you a broad overview of what it is that we're expecting over the next several days across North America, Central America, and the Caribbean Sea, for that matter. We are going to continue our coverage of this severe weather event unfolding in the southeast, and I want to give you the latest information on all of that as well. Thank Thank you very much for taking some time out of your Tuesday afternoon to join me. Please like and share this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Guys, let's fasten our seatbelts and get in here. So we're starting off on our half disk water vapor shot and you can see the primary weather player remains this comma feature across the eastern seaboard generated by a lot of this copious jet energy coming out of the southwest. This system is supported with the polar front jet. You can see it highlighting a ridge axis over the western parts of the United States dipping down in an associated trough across the central heart of the United States before ridging back to the north right into the triple point of this low as it moves across the Great Lakes. We also have our subtropical jet you can see coming out of the eastern Pacific across central Central Mexico through the southern periphery of Texas, feeding a lot of that intense thunderstorm activity that's been occurring over the Gulf Coast states for about 24 hours now. We've had five confirmed tornado touchdowns in parts of Louisiana and Mississippi, widespread convective wind reports out of that same general area, and we have had a few instances of hail also being reported observed at ground level. And it goes without saying, SPC is expecting this severe event to continue through at least the first half of today, finally beginning to taper off and make its fateful exit to the north and east east of those locations previously affected as we go through the overnight hours of tonight. For my folks down there in the Caribbean AOR, you guys are sitting pretty right now. There really isn't a whole lot going on. It looks like even Central America is finally seeing a reprieve of the tremendous thunderstorm activity that you were previously observing for what felt like two to three weeks on end when we were covering 97L trekking across the Caribbean and all that onshore flow that was providing you with very, very intense flood conditions. If you look real close, there is a tiny little bit of thunderstorm activity and some moisture left with Invest 99L. I'm a little confused as to why National Hurricane Center still has this on its charts with a 10% chance of development at this point and at the beginning of its life cycle. I would have just left it alone and never highlighted it whatsoever. You can see we're not expecting any sort of activity or impact or influence throughout our Caribbean, Greater Antilles, or Central America for that matter. Finally, looking out over the Atlantic, if you look real close in the water vapor shot, there is a spin right in through here moving to the east of Bermuda, kind of moving across the Central Atlantic at a pretty steady rate. This is what I believe is going to steal the name Vince as a subtropical cyclone as we go over the next 48 to 72 hours. We're going to continue to watch as this deepens and further organizes because you can see we already have a little bit of a cyclonic spin developing with that axis. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so as you can see, we are on Storm Prediction Center's page once again and the threat for severe has come down ever so slightly. We are still seeing a widespread threat for enhanced thunderstorm activity, strong winds, and a potential for an isolated tornado or two as that band of squall-like thunderstorms continues to propagate off to the east over parts of now Alabama moving through the Florida Panhandle, Georgia extending all the way up to Virginia, Tennessee, and the Carolinas. As we track this through time, day two looks a lot more improved. You can see that our threat for severe goes down dramatically with maybe a marginal risk right around the east coast of North Carolina near the Cape Hatteras area, and the rest of us expected to be under a marginal threat for at least isolated thunderstorms and shower activity, no threat for severe at this time. And then once you switch over to day three, there are no thunderstorms, or I should say severe weather forecast once we get to the 72-hour mark. We're actually looking pretty good once again for our Thanksgiving holiday. Here's our quantitative precipitation forecast brought to us by Weather Prediction Center, and you can see that on day one, we're expecting widespread rainfall spanning the eastern seaboard of the United States all the way into Quebec. Quebec and the eastern Canadian territories of Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and further off towards the east coastline of the North Atlantic in Canada. Our next storm system that you probably briefly saw on the water vapor shot is also coming on the west coast, moving over the Pacific Northwest, Idaho, Montana, and into British Columbia, helping to elevate their winds and their rainfall, as well as their higher terrain snowfall as that next branch of the polar front jet begins to work its way down and bring in our next swath of polar temperatures. Day two is much of the same. You can see out east we start to wean off a lot of that precip associated with our current Bear Clinic system moving across the eastern half of the lower 48. And if you look down at
in the Gulf of Mexico, yes, our next El Nino system is expected to take shape on the tail end of that frontal axis. And you can see as that system continues to propagate over the Intermountain West Great Basin area of the Central and Northern Rockies, we are expecting widespread precipitation with that as it moves across the Rocky Mountains. You can guarantee we're also going to see widespread snowfall associated with this as our next batch of freezing temperatures comes along with it. Finally, we're going to take a look at our WPC forecast charts because this is going to give us an idea of what's happening synoptically across the United States. As you can see, we have our Baraclinic system over the Great Lakes spanning across the eastern seaboard over the Appalachians, mid-Atlantic states down into the southeast, indicated that it has reached its mature phase by the notice of this purple occluded front right in through here. That means that the jet supporting its center of circulation has wandered to the south of it, and the parent low itself is now what's called poleward of its supporting jet stream. And as such, this has entered the mature phase or the back end of its life cycle and will likely taper off as this new low over the mid-Atlantic states begins to deepen down. Down and become our primary weather threat as it continues to ascend the jet moving up into the northeast where we'll see an abundance of snowfall and abundance of rainfall and if you look very closely there is a threat for freezing rain up in the northeastern states before you make that transition from rain to snow because we have what's called cold air dammed up against the higher terrain to the west of where that modified polar high pressure that 1034 high over the extreme northeast and parts of Nova Scotia is parked as you go over 12 hours this is 12z tomorrow you can see our next system is making its way into the Pacific Northwest, bringing up their rain, sleet, and snow chances. And another Baraclinic system is expected to start impacting the Dakotas, kind of warming conditions out there along the east side of the ridge we highlighted on water vapor. And as that continues to come down, they're going to mix together. If I go forward to zero Z on Thursday, you can see those rain and snow chances are expected to continue to go up. And because of the two opposing jet flows we have here supporting not only this mature system over the northern tier states moving through the Great Lakes and the one moving through western Conus, we are likely to see a non-convective wind threat from most of our locations on the lee side of the northern and central Rocky Mountains. Once you get into Friday, you can see we have widespread snowfall forecast as we have polar air coming out of central Canada and another shot of polar air coming off the west coast. That's going to be your maritime polar air formed up by that unstable wave that you saw working in on our earlier charts here on WPC. And this next front range cold plunge is going to help not only to clear the weather out from much of the Midwest, Upper Great Plains, the Great Lakes area, but this is also going to help to intensify how much snow fall we get over parts of Montana, the front range of the Rockies, in through Utah and Nevada at this point in time. You can also see rain chances are expected to go up along the Gulf Coast once more as that next El Nino subtropical system begins to take shape as we approach Black Friday this week. All right, so we're taking a look at our mean sea level pressure and precip overlays with the Euro on the left and the GFS on the right. And the main reason I'm bringing this up is just so we can reinforce what we saw on WPC's charts. If you pay close attention, not only out of our western conus, but down across the south, you can see right at about 18 to 0 Z on Friday. This is Thursday night going into Friday morning. Both our models are in full agreement that the tail end of the front pushing off the east coast is likely to generate our next El Nino supported low pressure system. This won't necessarily bring us a heavy bout of possible severe weather for the Sunshine State or the Gulf Coast. This will mainly just be another thunderstorm and a heavy rainmaker for some isolated areas along the Gulf of Mexico coastline and particularly here in the Central Florida area. As you can see, both models think we're going to see a very good closed center of circulation spin up and propagate across the peninsula before beginning to re-intensify as it picks up polar front jet support near the mid-Atlantic states where we typically see what's called our Hatteras lows spin up during this time of year. What I really want you to pay close attention to, and this now a little bit weaker, or at least it's indicated a bit weaker on our Euro product, but if you look specifically at the GFS, what's coming at about the 12Z point on the 28th through to December 1st, if you watch especially on the GFS, look at that widespread rain and precip event that's expected to propagate across the Gulf of Mexico, headed straight for the Gulf Coast, and particularly the Florida Panhandle and the northern periphery of the central Florida Peninsula. Initially at zero Zulu, if you look back over to the Euro, this is now showing that system expected to speed up and kick out of our AOR much faster, but at 0Z this morning and 12Z yesterday, and prior to that for that matter, the last several consecutive model runs of the European model, they were both on board and neck and neck with one another in terms of developing this more strong, this more potent and aggressive low pressure system over the Gulf of Mexico. I do think the Euro is going to get back on board with this because the GFS has been very consistent in its depictions, and I trust the GFS a lot more with 
these baroclinic or jet supported like systems as opposed to initial tropical formation as we saw so eloquently put by our GFS during the hurricane season. So this is when I do think we could have an increased threat for severe weather down across the southeast Florida and further to the north through our areas that are already being affected by our severe weather event that's ongoing as we watch this video as I film this video. So we're going to keep an eye out for the 28th through December 1st as we get ready to turn the calendar. I do think that's when we're going to see Storm Prediction Center begin to elevate the chance for maybe a marginal threat for severe weather depending on how organized this system tries to get before kicking out to the east away from the United States. Just to do a brief compare and contrast between the 0Z and the 12Z runs of the European model and kind of take into account the big changes we've seen run to run. I have the 0Z on the right hand side here and the 12Z on the left. And if you watch down across the southeast quadrant of the US, particularly looking at the 0Z iteration, as I quickly track this through time, you can see that Thanksgiving slash Black Friday system spin up and push across Florida. But then immediately after that, if you watch closely in the western part of the Gulf of Mexico, here comes our next system rapidly taking shape and pushing right towards the Sunshine State with some pretty good 850 millibar winds associated with it. This right here without looking at any other parameter given the dynamics we have in play, all the southerly flow moving across our greater Antilles Islands, the Bahamas coming out of the Caribbean Sea, and how aggressive of a wind field we have around this low pressure system, this is a clear indication very similar to what we have unfolding over the southeast right now that we could have severe weather associated with this upcoming feature if this iteration at 0Z does hold true. If you take a quick glance over on the left hand side at 12 Zulu, you can obviously see the euro has completely lost confidence that anything along those lines is going to take shape. And if I rewind us back to about the 144 hour mark, if you're watching the winds closely, it's expecting that that system is going to rapidly form up right there. You have a closed low, pretty much dead center of the Gulf of Mexico, rapidly accelerating along the leading edge of our next frontal system that's coming across the United States and boomeranging in between the Florida Keys and the northern periphery of Cuba and kind of getting washed out by that frontal system as it continues out across Bermuda and the central Atlantic. Atlantic. So now we're kind of in a toss up. The GFS has been very consistent in its depiction. The Euro was very consistent, 0 12, 0 12, and has since broken continuity only this afternoon at 12Z. So we'll have to continue to watch exactly what our deterministic model does and what the rest of our model parameters look like to determine if this is a viable threat we need to monitor over the next five to seven days or if this will likely trend down and we'll be out of the woods in terms of another severe weather event for the next week or two. Pulling you in close so we can see what the GFS is estimating as you track this through time when we get to those cardinal hours of about the 28th moving forward to about December 1st, you can see immediately that the GFS brings in that very, very aggressive storm system. And you can see particularly for North and Central Florida, that is where our max expected level of severe and heaviest rainfall and thunderstorm activity for that matter could be confined. We'll go up a few levels to 700 millibars. We were previously looking at the surface and you can see this is our vertical velocity chart as we go to that same time between November 28th and into the 1st of December. Very, very aggressive vertical velocities across parts of Florida as that system transitions across. So as you can see by these parameters or these dynamics specifically, we'd have a very, very aggressive system parked over top of us. And with that much vertical motion in the atmosphere, you can guarantee the thunderstorms that are moving out there will likely go severe, build very, very potent and strong vertically stacked updrafts that will rain down, provide us with a good shot at convective winds, maybe a marginal risk for hail and the isolated funnel cloud or two as this system propagates to the east. Lastly, we have to tie it into a nice bundle at 850 millibars. We'll go to that same time frame. We track this through time. And as that system approaches, you can see very, very strong southerly flow on the leading edge of that low vortex as it comes across central Florida. Very, very strong winds, as a matter of fact, with some 50 knot wind barbs indicated right over the heart of central Florida, pretty much right right on top of the Orlando metro area, moving towards the I-4 corridor, back towards Tampa St. Pete and exiting off the coastline. So if I had to make a determination, if this holds true, this would be the general area we'd likely see highlighted for that severe weather threat. If this holds true and we can get the Euro back on board or we can get the GFS off this high horse of bringing a very aggressive El Nino system through our neighborhood. Before we get ready to close out the video, we're going to look at the Eastern Seaboard GFS model just because I think it's very interesting that as I mentioned in the last couple of segments, of Weather Center, we are expecting that El Nino-like freight train to come out of Texas, northern Mexico, across the Gulf, and continue to buffet us here in the southeast with an elevated rain chance, elevated thunderstorm risk, as well as the chance of seeing some possible embedded severe with these systems as they move across. 
So I'm just going to simply take us through the loop, and if you watch down over the south, here comes our first system. There's number one coming across and moving out into the Atlantic. Here comes number two, beginning to make its way across, the one we were just looking at on the College of DuPage website. There goes our very aggressive one coming across. That's three. And then as you see, we go towards the back end of the loop. We have number four getting ready to take shape at the tail end of this frontal boundary as well. You can already kind of see a very small pocket of lower pressure forming off the southeastern tip of Texas, off the Mexico coastline with really good return flow indicated around here thanks to this high pressure parked over top of Bermuda. So I do anticipate adjustments obviously this is the GFS we are at the full 384 hour mark at this point but you can see that we are expecting a very very strong mature wave to move across the interior parts of CONUS which is likely to once again bring back the threat of severe weather if something along these lines begins to take shape and come to fruition as we get into the early parts of December. And now as we close out we got to look at the tropics because we do have some features highlighted. As I mentioned this area in orange highlighted now at a 60% chance of development over the next seven days is likely to take on the name of subtropical storm Vince. I have full faith and confidence it will do so. All of our models do anticipate it is going to break off from the frontal line that it is attached to currently deepen down before kicking off to the north and northeast. Maybe coming very close to our Azores Islands up in the northern eastern parts of the Atlantic Ocean. Maybe elevating your winds and rain for that neck of the woods as it really rapidly transitions up to the North Atlantic. Gets picked back up by our polar front jet and becomes Comes nothing more than a remnant baroclinic low. Invest 99L, I really have no words for this. I wish NHC would just scrub this from its charts, honestly, because we're not expecting anything. As I showed you on water vapor, and this is echoed across infrared, visible, true color, whatever you want to put on the table, as well as our radar down there, there's really nothing associated with this bare, naked, low pressure. There is a closed low that you can identify in the fair weather cumulus wrapped around its center, but at this point in time, it's only going to continue to diminish and prevent itself from developing any substantial convection and further consolidating because it's nestled in within that very, very dense dry air. So I would hope this is scrubbed from this chart over the next 24, 48 hours. We're really not going to see any impacts in Central America and a lot of your increased thunderstorm coverage that we're expecting over the next three, five, maybe even seven days from now, likely going to be coming from the Pacific monsoonal trough and the garden variety thunderstorms will have firing over South America, moving off to the West with that prevailing easterly flow over the Caribbean Sea. Alrighty, folks, this wraps up our latest iteration of Weather Center Nazario. Thank you again for joining me today, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure bringing you these weather forecasts and these broadcasts on a day-to-day -day basis, as well as taking part in our live streams. Today is still a little up in the air in terms of we'll be doing a live stream at 8 p.m. tonight, but I will more than likely do so, even if it be an abbreviated stream, just to make up for the fact that we have our holidays knocking on our door within the next 48 to 72 hours. I personally will be traveling and outside of the weather center, but I will have all my camera equipment and my personal laptop packed with me, so this way I can continue these very abbreviated weather center segments for you guys as we go through the rest of this week and into the weekend. Once again, please like and share this video and subscribe to the channel. I have a wonderful amount of good and entertaining plus educational segments on the way for you guys as we transition out of tropical season, out of this severe weather event, and into the parts of winter and spring where I expect to bring a lot more lively content to you guys to get us through the next couple of seasons before we prepare for the ever-anticipated hurricane season 2024. We'll see you guys again very soon. Thank you for watching. This is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.